Unless you are living under a rock, you no doubt have noticed that Klipsch has released two brand new powered speakers. You've probably even binge watched or read a few reviews of the Nines, which many are calling the biggest, the baddest smart speakers on the market. What if the Nines are not the best new Klipsch powered speaker? We were lucky enough to be sent both the nines and the sevens, and even luckier still to have the original fives in house. Obviously, the first thing we did was unbox the nines, but it wasn't until we got to the sevens that things started to become clear. The sevens are the middle child and Klipsch's new line of powered smart speakers that include the awesome fives and the massive nines. Like most middle children, the sevens haven't gotten as much attention because bigger is always better in hi-fi, am I right? The nines are definitely bigger, but let's focus on the sevens. Don't worry, don't worry, we're gonna get to the nines though. The sevens are a two-way powered speaker featuring a six and a half inch woofer mated to a one inch vented titanium tweeter that rests within a Tractrix horn. They are self-powered and they utilize a 200 watt amplifier so there is no need for third party power. According to Klipsch, the 200 watt amp provides 80 watts of power to each of the woofers and 20 watts to its tweeters. Combined with the speaker's rear facing port, you get a speaker system with a reported frequency response of 39 hertz to 25 kilohertz. Like all of the Heritage inspired powered speakers, the Sevens have several input options that include HDMI with ARC, optical, USB, an analog mini jack, and a switchable line input that you can toggle between a standard stereo line level input or a phono preamp that works with moving magnet turntables. There's also a subwoofer output should you want to extend the speaker's response to a true 20 hertz. As for wireless connection though, the sevens like the nines and the fives are limited, featuring only Bluetooth 5.0 with Aptex and Aptex HD support. Sadly, the sevens lack support for Wi-Fi anything, meaning no AirPlay, Alexa, or Google Assistant, or Chromecast support. We connected the sevens to our 98 inch TCL TV using a high speed HDMI cable, as well as the Cambridge Audio Alva TT V2 turntable and their new AXN 10 music streamer. To test the speaker's Bluetooth capability, we relied on my aging iPhone and the Alva turntable. Again, because these are powered speakers, they do not require an external amplifier or receiver. Now both the sevens and the nines finish options are similar to the older fives coming in black or walnut real wood veneers. Now the ivory grills that come with the walnut finish I, j I just love. Just like the fives, the speaker's controls are located on the top of the primary speaker and feature two roller styled dials, one for volume and the other for source selection. The controls are nice if you're setting the speakers up on a desk, but in a living room, they're kind of useless. Thankfully, Klipsch includes a basic remote as well as a control app that, wait for it, works on both Android and iOS devices. When we first reviewed the fives in 2020, the app was pretty basic, offering limited customization and control over the speakers. What a difference time can make. The app is actually good. Getting the app to recognize the speakers is easy. And once inside the app, you have control over volume, input selection, a three band EQ, dynamic bass control, and more. From the factory, the sevens ship in their flat profile, but you can tune them using the clip supplied presets or just create your own custom profile that is automatically saved when you make any manual adjustments inside the app. Now setting up the sevens is pretty straightforward, but it does come with a small asterisk. Included with both the sevens and the nines are two proprietary speaker cables, one four meter four conductor cable and a two meter extension cable, giving you a total length of about six meters or a little over 19 feet. And now for some of you, this may be all the cable you need, but in our room, it wasn't quite enough and it limited our placement options. Because most speakers we review sit around nine feet apart, but when you factor in the height of your speaker stands, and yes, I recommend that you stands with these speakers. Plus the distance of the speakers from your front wall, you may discover that six meters ain't all that long. If speaker cable length isn't an issue, the included six foot power cable might be. Now we had enough cable to keep the speakers properly spaced, but not enough that I had all of the flexibility I would have liked. And since one speaker is the primary speaker, all of your devices will be connected to it. So if your you know, systems are a little bit more on the complicated side, you may end up doing some battle with the Hi-Fi Kraken. With the speakers eight and a half feet apart and positioned a little over two feet into our room, I used RoomEQ Wizard and I did some sweeps 20 to 20 to see what the sevens could do. 
out of the box and in their flat setting with no subwoofer connected, the 7s were actually pretty linear from about 40 hertz on up. But the bass and mid-range, they definitely had a few peaks and a notable dip as the speaker transitioned into the highs. There are five factory presets as well as one custom setting, and boy, do each of these presets change the sound and frequency response of the speaker. The difference is they're not subtle. Flat was the most accurate or neutral setting, but if you need to tweak, Klipsch provides adequate adjustment via EQ. Using the app, it is possible to tune the sevens to relative perfection or to whatever your taste may be. To achieve the most accurate response, I used the three band EQ and I added a separate subwoofer. The response was not only respectable, it was shockingly good. I actually achieved better results with the 7s than I did with the 9s. The 9s remained peaky throughout the low mid bass, resulting in a chesty sound. When it comes to the bass, Klipsch's heritage inspired powered speakers have always overperformed, possessing an impressive amount of weight and punch in the 7s. They're no different. Compared to the larger nines, they are not as boomy and the bass therefore is more taut and nuanced on its own. If you engage dynamic bass on either model, you're gonna hear a considerable boost in the low end. Activating this mode in smaller rooms or when placed closer to a wall may negate the need for a sub. That said, I don't personally like the sound of the sevens with dynamic bass on. I know it's supposed to help with bass impact at lower volumes, but it also increases the low end no matter what the volume is, which spoils the speaker's otherwise pretty solid intelligibility, and it's even worse when you activate it on the nines. For best results, a properly set up subwoofer connected to the sevens will give you the most linear and accurate bass response. The mid-range is similar to my experience with Klipsch's newer RP600M Mark IIs. The sound is mostly neutral, though I did note a mild boost in energy, which lends some added presence to most vocals, making artists and mid-range leaning instruments like acoustic guitar seem more or less in room or front and center rather than laid back. You know I like that, so I was happy to hear it from the sevens. Overall, I found the 7's mid-range to be notably more articulate and clear compared to the 9's. Now, I'm not saying the 9's are bad, they just have a little bit more cabinet coloration and chestiness that is definitely audible. 70's era rock fans especially, you may actually really take to the 9's more old school rock and roll character, but for the rest of you, especially if you listen to electronica or acoustic ensembles, think you're going to prefer the 7's mid-range. I know I did. The highs have some roll off that occur starting at around one kilohertz. In the flat EQ profile, this dip remains pretty linear from about 2K on up to 20K. Highs are extended, airy, and detailed, but not overly sharp or fatiguing, which is great. Combined with the dip coming out of the mid range, some vocals may sound more laid back or recessed. For example, David Gray's vocal range rests almost exclusively in the sevens mid range. However, when he really reaches into his upper range, you know, goes for it, these moments actually seem to take a step back rather than project. Now, not every artist or track will showcase this. Nevertheless, it's worth noting. It is possible to minimize this with some EQ, but it's never 100% gone. The sevens are far more linear than the nines as you transition from the mid range to the treble. Nevertheless, it's a trait that you're going to find on both speakers. Moving on to the soundstage and dynamics, the sevens more than deliver. Spatially, the sevens are capable of room filling sound with terrific dynamic snap. Center imaging, it's exceptional, but absolute separation between instruments within the rest of the stage is maybe above average, but not quite best in class. Regardless, whether listening to music or watching movies, the sevens are super engaging and spacious enough that I found their performance to be as compelling as a lot of soundbar setups. Getting to comparisons, starting with Klipsch and their three powered speaker options, the fives, the sevens, and the nines. I love the fives. I still think they're a very good speaker, and if you're looking for a powered desktop or bedroom speaker, the fives are the better solution of the three. But if you're searching for a two-channel setup that also works as a minimal home theater speaker system, I would choose the sevens over the nines. The sevens are more accurate, and well, in my opinion, they're just better. No doubt the nines can party, and I repeat, I'm not saying the nines are bad, but they have issues when it comes to the bass. The nines always had a chestiness in the mid-range that cost the speaker some of its clarity and dialogue intelligibility. Now, your mileage may vary, but if you want my advice, get the sevens and a decent subwoofer, like one of Klipsch's brand new reference premiere subs, just call it a day. But let's step away from the Klipsch family of speakers. 
The Sevens would still be my pick when compared to offerings from SVS and ELAC, two brands that have speakers with features that go head to head with the Sevens. Compared to the Prime Wireless Pro from SVS, the Sevens are better built and in my opinion, they're just nicer to look at. But looks aside, Klipsch's HDMI implementation and use, it's flawless, whereas the SVS had more than a few bugs with respect to CEC at the time of our review. Now sonically, these two speakers have more than a few things in common, though the Sevens and even the Fives play lower with less strain. Now when it comes to dynamics and scale, the Sevens monster the SVS, making them more ideal for movies. The ELAC debut connects, they're good, but they are truly suited for smaller spaces or say desktop systems, so I don't really think it's actually that fair to compare them to the Sevens. Now, if you're considering these or a similarly priced soundbar and are wondering what to do, here's the approach that I would recommend. If I knew my tastes were evenly split between music and movies, I would take the sevens and a subwoofer all day. If I favored music over movies, I'd definitely get the sevens, again, over a soundbar. But if I were movie focused, I would go with a soundbar, especially if your budget allows you to go with something from the likes of say Samsung and their Q990B or even better, a Sennheiser Ambio. That's the kind of money you would need to spend in order to do better than the sevens. I gotta say, I love what Klipsch is doing with these new powered speakers, and I especially love the Sevens we've reviewed here. If anything, the Sevens, at least in terms of fit and finish, are what the new Reference Premiere series could have looked like. But all that aside, of the three speakers currently available, the five, seven, and nines, I think the Sevens are the real sweet spot and are our new reference for powered speakers. So that's it. That is now my review of Klipsch's brand new The Sevens and kind of The Nines. But before we go or get out of here, what do you think of them? <laughs> Babe, you did so good with your review. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Why do I sense the world's biggest butt coming? Oh, no, there's no butt. Okay. I 100% agree with your review. Mm-hmm. I know that the nine size is going to be very tempting to a lot of people, mm -hmm. but I think it's important that, that you know or understand that the bass control is just not going to be as good as yeah. the sevens. Yeah. And like Andrew said, the boxiness, it, it did weird things to the dialogue for me. Mm -hmm. So intelligibility with the nines, I, I just wasn't for me. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's just not quite the same. They, they do have their own vibes. And if you're worried, just trust that the sevens, they are more than enough to fill most rooms. Mm -hmm. I and mean, we have a really big room and it, they, they did. They were fine. They were really good. Yeah. And, and you know, listen, I'm not saying that there, there won't be those of you who hear the nines and you're just going to become transfixed on the bass. I just, for me, I think there's more to a speaker than going boom, boom. <laughs> Yeah, there, there, there is more than boom, boom. Yeah, for sure. Uh, now I'm anticipating this question. Okay. Um, would you still pick the sevens if you were to use a sub with the nines? Because we tried that. We did try that. Um, the nines do improve. They lose a little bit of that resonance, the cabinet uh, coloration when you use a sub. But for me, it's always kind of still there. It's totally there. I don't and, think it did enough. And um, it is better. So if you get the nines, you say to hell with what we have to say, and you get the nines, or you've already bought the nines, and you're at home going, is that what I'm hearing? Oh, man. If you have a subwoofer, go ahead and connect it. Go ahead and connect it. You may find um, that it does clear that up or clean that up just a little bit, but sadly, I don't think you can ever fully do away with it. Um, you would probably need to have a 6 or 11 or 12 band EQ inside the app to f finely tune those areas to bring the energy down on those frequencies that is exciting that particular cabinet. I totally agree. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the nines and their bass issues, mm -hmm. I'm curious if you think a smaller room or a room that is less open than ours would make them a better fit or make the bass less of an issue for those spaces. And the reason why I ask that is because mm -hmm. of the reviews I have seen yeah. of the nines, a lot of people are demoing those in much smaller rooms, like yeah. rooms with four walls, whatnot. Yeah. So I, I want to know what your thoughts are. Well, look, and I know this because I've spoken with some people at Klipsch. I know that 
their signature, their vibe tends to be a little bit more bombastic in the low end. They really pride themselves on being able to deliver that punch. So in a smaller room, the nines on their own are going to load bass probably even more than what we experienced in our room. So some of you who may be thinking about the nines or maybe you already have the nines and are in rooms that are half the size of this one, they may be going like, oh my God, if I added a subwoofer, I'd crack my foundation. And you're not wrong. You're not necessarily wrong. Um, but I lean towards accuracy. And for me, I don't mind a mild rise in the bass of like, you know, three to maybe pushing it to like 5 dB over reference, whatever it was that I used to create my reference line. I don't mind a little boost because that can be fun. And, you know, a lot of room curves naturally have a little bit of rise in the bass. That said, the nines just are... They're just a, because I think the cabinet could have used one extra brace or just a little bit more sound deadening or something. The the boominess, there's just that kind of hollowness to the bass, whereas the seven still have that little mild rise, but it's taut. It's faster. It's it's more detailed and articulate. And for me, that's what I value. Um, would the nines work in a small space the way that I've seen some people set them up? Absolutely. And would it be big and bold and klipsch? You bet. But would it be accurate? No. And when it comes to the bass, uh, I hate to say this, I hate to sound like a, an audiophile, but the surface you set these on matters. Um, I would not. And I know klipsch has advertised this and I've seen other reviewers do it. I would not set any of these speakers on a table or credenza, anything that's hollow underneath, especially the nines. Even on our concrete forms here, which are not 100% solid, but they're more solid than, say, uh, your standard Amazon Entertainment Center. Uh, having them on that surface versus stands only contributed to the boominess and the coloration of the cabinet. Even with Klipsch's really nicely thought out cork mat that they include on the bottom of the fives, the sevens, and the nines, that's not enough um, separation or decoupling uh, for that uh, boominess to go away. So, yeah. Okay, I'm so glad you brought up the stands. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you. They just didn't sound as good as they when not. they were on the stands. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that most people do not even have anything near as long as what we have. So you're, yeah. you're probably looking at just, you know, your standard entertainment cabinet, whatnot. Mm -hmm. And those are, those maybe what are like 50 to 60 inches if you're lucky. Yeah. You're probably only having about four feet of space between the speakers. Which you know. I, I'm just going to say that's just not enough space to mm -hmm. put in between the speakers Yeah, to sound their best. So I really, really agree with that using stands is the way to go. It's an important conversation. Mm -hmm. And speaking of stands, Klipsch has just announced new stands that are made to go specifically with these types of speakers. Mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll leave a link for you. Uh, comparisons just really quickly. Okay. Mission LX Connects that we reviewed, they are s about $1,700 mm -hmm. a pair, 600 watts per speaker. Mm -hmm. Quickly, your thoughts. Um, the missions are actually an even more well-behaved speaker, arguably a more neutral speaker than the Klipsch. Um, they're not as exciting. They're not as captivating dynamically, for sure. Uh, they don't quite produce quite the spaciousness, you know, room-filling sound, but they do have a little bit better imaging. Um, I like the missions. I really do. But I got to say, especially in the new walnut Lambswool grill combination, I'd pick the sevens. Canto YU6, they are still very good and they're ba basically free. They're yeah. uh, they're on sale right now at four seventy nine a pair. Oh uh, yeah, I mean at four seventy nine a pair. If you're shopping on a budget, obviously the sevens are going to be out of reach. But you're going to need to add the subwoofer to the Canto. Oh for it's sure, it's like the sub eight or something. Yeah yeah, you look Canto is still a great speaker and an awesome all rounder that sounds pretty remarkable with all genres of music and if you're at all sensitive to high frequencies or you don't like that kind of horn waveguide sound, obviously the Cantos aren't going to do that or give you that sound, so it might be more to your liking. The 7s are the better speaker. 
they are. They have more connection options, they play louder with less strain, and they can just do more. But for that, you're spending, I think, close to an extra $1,000 to get there. Uh, is it worth it? To me, it is. But like I said, if your budget is like $500 or less, the YU6s are still borderline untouchable. Uh, moving on to the new Sono speakers. Sorry, we still haven't heard them. Um, nope, haven't heard them. I actually don't even know anything about them. Yeah, they don't send us press releases. No, it's not okay. even that. I haven't even Googled them yet. <laughs> I know, but if they at least sent... A, and anyway, moving yeah. on. Now, considering that the Samsung Q990B is currently on sale and is actually cheaper than the 7s... Really? Wow. Um, would you still buy the 7s in this particular instance? Like I said, if I'm more music oriented or I know that I'm going to be listening to at least 50-50 music and movies, I'm going to side with the sevens. I would get the Samsung if I knew that it's like I occasionally listen to music and I do want it to sound good. I do want to sit down and appreciate it. But I'm Mr. Movie Night every night. Get the Samsung. And the reason for that is, is that as good and as spacious as the sevens are, and they, they are actually pretty phenomenal. Um, they just can't compete with literally being surrounded by speakers, especially with speakers with upward firing overhead drivers, blah, 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 blah. So watching Atmos encoded content, it makes a difference. To each their own, I could be happy with either. I Me just, too. I just honestly, I was not expecting to be as impressed. Uh, not that the fives weren't impressive, they were. But I gotta say, the sevens are a notable step up from the fives. I kind of think that the fives need a refresh. I, think, I, I do too. I think the fives need that larger horn. I think the fives maybe could use with a little bit more power or a wider uh, port on the back because um, they actually are more peaky in the treble than the sevens or the nines. And when pushed, the fives, I never thought I would say this, but in direct comparison to the sevens or nines, the fives actually kind of possess more of that, I guess, negative old school clipped sound that so many people like to harp on, whereas the sevens and the nines follow a little bit more in the tradition of where I think the Mark IV heritage speakers and the new reference Premier Mark II speakers are in terms of linearity uh, due to the, quote, crossover changes. Anyway, I, I, I'm with you. I think that they did a great job. Oh, yeah. And I really, really enjoyed them. This was a lot of fun. This was a this was a lot this was a fun review a lot of work pulling all three speakers out but it was it was a lot of fun well worth it and uh, looking forward to logging a few more hours with the sevens so anything else nope that's it that's it guys that's now our review of Klipsch's brand new the sevens and the nines and kind of the fives uh, what did you guys think let us know down in the comments below uh, question of the day easiest one in the world and that is of the three which one's the best. Whether or which you, one are you? Which, which one, one are you now leaning towards? If you own it, if you own one of them, weigh in. If you're still contemplating, which one are you now leaning towards? Let's get the conversation going. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. Please use my links. If you use any of the links that my girl leaves for you down below, know that that's a great way that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And we both thank you all very, very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram, Recovering Audio File, and that's it. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video.